The Left Show is not intended for youngsters. It's not intended for the sensitive. It's certainly not intended for right-wingers. Use your own discretion. Awful swearing. The network children ask for it by name. The Defenestrate Media Network. The world's greatest podcast network. It's Monday in America, and you are listening to the world's greatest political podcast, J.M. Bell's The Left Show. You know who the best looking person sitting up there was? Who was it with the cowboy hat? No, J.M. Bell. J.M. Bell. I don't know who that is. He hosts a podcast. Boy, do I have a surprise for you guys this week. It's a flash to the past. It is. It's like my favorite days of doing this podcast all back in the same room. Yep. Yep. Hi. Hi, Taylor. Hi. It's Taylor. Yay. My, my favorite ad we ever did to try and get people on Patreon was with the two of you. Was it with oh, us? Right. Yeah. Yep. I like, was... Hi, it's Jeff here. Can you see here? Hey, it's Taylor. She says, "Yeah, that's right. That that fun little ad." <laughs> yeah, I'm like, let's try to keep this I at was... sixty, and it was two minutes forty. Yep, I was thinking of our. Uh, I was thinking of our little uh, conversation where I was going on about Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, and how he was actually Jewish because he, you know, wanted to follow <laughs> Levitical law and and. Uh, and so I think Bob said, "Well, why not? He can have Jew- he can have better deli food if he's Jewish." And that's when Taylor said, Has- "Haven't the Jews suffered enough?" <laughs> <laughs> that that was a good commercial too. We were, I, we ran yeah. that as a commercial for a while. <laughs> I I ran that uh, during the five hundredth a couple weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. That, that was one of my examples of uh, when we were talking about Forrest um, mm-hmm. and how funny that fucker was. Um, I did a thing to this week on the Facebook, uh, uh, a Facebook memory popped up about the, the save the forest show six years ago. I know. I keep seeing that pop up. I'm like, Oh wow. That yeah, was... it keeps pumping Doesn't up me too. And like... So uh... I clicked on it to share it and, and, and give a little vague booking about how much I missed forest and Ken and Bob Henline have a conversation in the facebook text and it's like fuck it's a oh, it's a it's a God. double punch in the gut yeah <laughs> oh. I, dude, with both of them gone now yeah. that's sad but no that, that was the, that was a hell of a show that we put on four bands four comics uh mm-hmm. eight hours as i recall it was a it seemed to be a long <laughs> long that went well into the morning i remember uh merlot was our last comic and was just blotto <laughs> she'd been drinking she started drinking when she got to the club and yep didn't stop, yep. <laughs> stop. no that was uh i remember one of the bands uh mary tebbs uh chastising the audience for talking while she performed <laughs> like, you've been playing too many garden parties because this is how bar music is yeah you know people, people, people are, are stopping having... and looking something's wrong yeah exactly or something's right if people are stopping to look, but yeah, yeah, oh, that's funny. I mean, and and they were doing a great job, but I do. I just remember that we raised about thirteen grand for Forest. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, between that and and a couple of grand with the auction, uh, yep. I mean that was a hell of an event, you know. And it, it and time. it was a good time. It was a very good time. I was very I was startled that we pulled it off. Uh, that was the one and only time I wore my pirate boots. <laughs> <laughs> I wore them with my kilt and they were super uncomfortable. And because I'd bought them so far out, I could not return them. So I own a pair of pirate boots. I can never wear. Mm. That's if anybody wants a size 13 medium. Cause I need a size 13 double E. <laughs> I, I have fat feet. <laughs> but anyway, Taylor. Hi. Oh, so pleased to see you. I have one fat foot. 
so, like when I was pregnant, my feet grew, but like one grew wide and one grew long. That sucks. <laughs> it's stupid. So, like one, I had different size shoes, but like now my feet are one foot's fat and one's not. It's really so weird. I love. I don't it. even know how you buy shoes for that. You just buy fat foot feet like shoes. It's just yeah, one foot is always foot. uncomfortable. Or you, yep. yeah, well, like sometimes I'll just like wear my skinnier shoes and I'll just let that foot go numb. Well, Fair. when you go when you go into the uh, when you go into the uh, the famous footwear, you make sure no one's looking, and you get and one shoe in the. You, you get two different <laughs> shoes, two different sizes. You fuck so the next person that comes, but you got you got your sizes right. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I should have been doing. Yeah. They're more used to it at the Payless than and the Walmart than they are at the the Famous. But you could get away with it the Famous. <laughs> are there any Payless is left though? I feel like Payless is gone. I, I think like they're Payless gone. Is, yeah, I think they're gone. Or maybe they're online only. Hang on. You know what? Let's they're Google. really expensive for being Payless. They yeah. didn't used to be back before you were born. They were the Kmart of shoes. Well, I remember getting airwalks there all the time. And then like as an adult, when I need like a pair of fancy shoes for a day, I'm like $40. I'll just go buy Vans and like all black. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. They're still around. They are they are now online only. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. Pay less to buy pay less pay less online to buy shoes. Yeah. Not gonna do it. I am I am currently in pay less and pay more for feels- shipping. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like I'm on an endless quest to find a comfortable fucking pair of boots uh, that I can wear for uh, 10 hours standing at a time. And I'm like two have already gone back thanks to Amazon Prime returns. Jeff Bezos may be the devil, but by God, he's got a return policy that speaks to me, Mm -hmm. fucker. (laughs) So, yeah, that's turned into quite of a trend. It's a, and quite a debate online, too, because I threw it out to the general audience over there on the Facebook. And we got to the point where one of my, one of my friends, Chris, is like, well, let's just do a GoFundMe to buy you a pair of boots. I'm like, fuck no. We save GoFundMes for when I need insulin, not for when I need footwear. <laughs> <laughs> that shit's far waste, more expensive. Can't waste a GoFundMe on feet. <laughs> so... Interesting week in the news. Mm-hmm. And I know that we do this every time. Well, with one exception, every time there's a change or we get through an election, we get out the other side and we're like, bah, there's probably not going to be a lot to talk about, except, of course, the 2016 election where we're like, yeah, Woo-hoo! we got <laughs> renewed for four more years. Um, but OK, we know right now that I obviously fetishize Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. I love the little fucker. Um, and, and have, yeah, he's a really, really nice guy. But something weird happened this week where White House staffers who told the truth during their background investigations um, were asked to resign or to work remotely. Now, that's the part that freaks me out. And I'm going to tell some jokes about. But uh, after they revealed that they had used marijuana in the past. And it's like work remotely. What are you expecting them to? I don't are know. Have a blaze up on the job. Chill? Yeah, yeah, what, yeah. What the? It's like work remotely. Okay. None of cause... it. None of it made sense to me. Um, I get that we're not. That it's still federally illegal. That Congress hasn't made that change. It is uh, still a federal crime. Many... Yeah, but. The fact is, is that in D.C. itself, it's not a crime Uh, in the majority of the United in the the majority of the states. It's not a crime anymore to use marijuana, Um, depending upon your situation. There are a good majority of them. It's medical use only. But there are quite a few that are full recreational use, you know, blaze up if you want to. Um, But, yeah, this this really I'm like the 90s called. They want their uh, administration, their White House administration back. You know, where it was, we were so, we were, you remember when Clinton almost didn't get to be president because he had to admit to having smoked marijuana once? (laughs) Does this mean Barack Obama can't come to visit? Is he going to have to resign? But why do they want to like, 
get people clean and not smoke any weed and make them work at home. Because I'll tell you what, me working at home has dramatically increased how much marijuana I smoke. <laughs> this is true. Because like, I'll just be sitting there and it's like, oh, it's right here. I'm not going to do anything. Yep, I got nowhere to be. No, I don't need to be anywhere. <laughs> and all my meetings are done today. Yep. I can enjoy myself for the next hour. Uh, no, it's it, it just seems it seems silly. I realized why they did it. And also, uh, they didn't just choose to be honest on their uh, on their background checks. You're you kind of have to be because they're going to find it if you're not. I found that out. With my own background check, and what did you lie about? Yeah, I. That's the thing. I didn't. So I did a background check, and they ask if you've ever been fired from a job, and I put down yes, and they said, "Please explain the circumstances." And I did. Then my boss lost the paperwork. And he said, uh -oh. "You fill out the form again." So I filled out the form again. Did you have you ever been fired from a job? Yes, and blah blah blah. Okay. And then he, then that paperwork didn't reach the people that were supposed to see the paperwork. So he handed me a third one. This oh. time I was going through on automatic and check no without paying any attention to the fact that I just hit that question. That's the one the fuckers get. And they're like, <laughs> no, well, we see that you were fired from this job on this date. You know, why are you lying on your, and I almost lost my job over that. Uh, the wow. job I'd been working at for two years before they ever got around to getting my background check done, by the way. Um, and this is during the Obama administration. So that's on you, Barry. Uh, but yeah, it was like it, it took them forever to get to me. And then finally they there. I'm like, oh, shit, I could lose my job. So I go through. I have to write like this affidavit. I have to get my boss to sign off on it. And then I got like the the stern, you know, you don't lie on these forms. And I'm like, I didn't fucking lie on the form. <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally missed truth. Uh, yeah, I just if you got the right time, well, the truth. Yeah, if you'd got the right form, you would have seen it. It's you fuckers who lost the form well, I, the second time. Yeah. So uh, marijuana is still a federal crime, mm -hmm. and and I think a lot of the internet chatter and and during a conversation yesterday that you might recall. It was like, well, why not just pardon them? <laughs> and and honestly, the, the only way I can answer that, and it's and it is fucked up that this is what you have to say. The optics would be horrible, and the Republicans would have a goddamn field day about it because it is Republican it, opposition that is still standing in the way of legalization. Is these fucking be... idiots keep doing their fucking reefer madness bullshit? I think I, I agree that the optics would be horrible, but at the same time, I can also see the optics not being, you know, a, among the American people wouldn't. I mean, yeah, the Fox News crowd would go fucking nuts and they would have they would use this as fodder for the next four years against Biden. But for the the average American who's like what you can still get fired for smoking marijuana, you know, you can still not keep a White House job for using marijuana. That's 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 where I think it wouldn't be as bad in the optics, because I think most Americans are like, the fuck is this? You know, this well, I mean, to that point, while I do agree with you in spirit, yeah. I also show you this picture of 76 million Americans voting for Donald Trump. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, there's, there's 76 million complete fucking dipshits. That are still running around the country voting and still that's, listening, you know, and still listening to Tucker Carlson every night. Yeah, they like the majority of them don't smoke weed because they're busy smoking crack in their yeah. little punk towns. <laughs> well, crack's fine. It's a small town. That's what we do here. Yep. It's how you make uh, revenue. Yeah, I do it. So uh, Mar-a-Lago is mostly closed now because of a COVID outbreak among the staff. <laughs> I am what? shocked. I am uh, shocked. Uh, this is COVID is not that big of a deal. I am just shocked. It's the flu, man. It's just the flu, right? It's the in Mar Lago. The sun is shining. Yeah, just, the sun is shining. Does it miraculously go away in the sunshine? It does. Yeah. It's supposed to. Yeah. Huh. Weird. Super weird. Uh so Ted Cruz, look, folks, if the news feels a little 
disjointed. It was very early when I put it together this morning. <laughs> but uh, we are in a section of the news that I am calling Woke and Broke because these are people that have woken up and decided to break things. Senator Ted Cruz uh, decided to have himself an invitation only phone call last week in which one of the participants recorded it and gave it to the Associated Press. Not all heroes wear capes. Oh, <laughs> a little person. You were kidding. You did wake up. Hi, buddy. Say hi. Hi. Okay. Come say hi. Nope. Nope. Don't be shy. Okay. Um, <laughs> But yeah, basically, uh, Ted Cruz is claiming that Democrats are trying to expand voting rights to illegal aliens and child molesters. All right. Okay. Like, pretty specific, buddy. Do you have anything to back that up? No. No. (laughs) Something from Tucker Carlson is what he has. That's ill. Yeah. Yeah. And Republicans must do all they can to stop them, us. Um, Basically, (laughs) saying if HR1 passes, that uh, that Republicans will never win another election. And so every state needs to be as as vigilant as they can in making sure that people can't vote. I I actually agree with him that if H.R. 1 passes, Republicans will probably never get elected again. And by that, I mean, (laughs) by that, I mean, the Republican Party or the Republicans that we see now, like Ted fucking Cruz, who incite insurrection and then turn around and say, well, I didn't have anything to do with it. These are the people that aren't going to get elected anymore. And you will see Republicans get elected, but they'll be the the Republicans we remember from long ago before we had the continental divide of, uh, you know, of gaps between right and left. Yeah. The, you know, the, the first chiseling into that crack was ha- was started by Ronald Reagan and the guy, the gang, widened by Limbaugh, widened by Fox News and all those fuckwits. And Are Trump, we doing phrasing? And then Trump just dropped a dropped a nuke in there to make it the white, you know, make it a fully a full gap. And I think that you'll, you know, you if if we could get HR one passed, I think yeah, you wouldn't see as bad a people coming in. I also think it would be it would spell a death knell for people like Diane Feinstein. Oh, know, good. Who I'm we happy need to, who we need to get out of office and have needed to get out of office for what two decades now or more. Yeah. Lindsey Graham, you're my hero. <laughs> oh, she's lost her fucking mind. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But it is. It's a, it is the season of Republicans uh, just running on full out paranoia as opposed to, I don't know, just being general assholes. I'm just yeah. so they're running on paranoia, which comes from smoking marijuana. So you think that maybe uh, the problem. Oh, <laughs> But then they, then they have that professional paranoia. You want you wind up with those Republicans who have that attitude of, well, if it, you know, the Utah Republican, if if it's not around, then I won't be tempted by it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a second, yeah. but uh, <laughs> you know what? We can talk about that now. All I got to do is rearrange the links, and I can. I have the power. But the Utah campaign against porn. The public health crisis of pornography marches all those, on. All those porn particulates we breathe and cause us uh, lung problems in this state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, I've got porn cancer. <laughs> it's metastasizing, baby. You know why I don't yeah. feel confident about Cox about this? Like Cox was complaining. <sighs> sorry. You know, Cox was complaining about J Lo and Shakira at the Super Bowl last year. Oh no. And yep. so he's definitely just going to be like, well, my wife told me that I can't <laughs> love ladies anymore and she's going to make me turn things off. My bishop found out because my wife tattled. Uh, no. So conservative lawmakers in Utah uh, have passed another goddamn bill um, in their uh, crusade against online porn with a new requirement that all cell phones and tablets sold in the state automatically block pornography in a plan that critics call a significant intrusion on free speech. Do you know why they're calling it that? Because that's what it is. That's what it is. (laughs) My God. You know, they can just stop watching it. They don't have to do anything about it. Like, no, if it's around, I'm going to be tempted by it. I need it gone. I can't have it on my phone or my tablet, or I'm going to want to look at it. 
or I'm going to get caught. <laughs> exactly. And the I'm fact get caught. that a guy named Cox signed the bill. Yeah, I know. Easy joke. Yeah. Low hanging fruit. Cox. Low hanging fruit. Cox. But it's it's definitely opened up. Uh, let's get an ACL, ACLU lawyer on it because it's definitely a violation of our freedom of speech. So. Oh, absolutely. This is going to be another multi-million dollar boondoggle that Utah loses in court. Yep. Larry Flynn may have been a garbage human being, but the motherfucker helped set precedent. Mm-hmm. You know? I mean, that's and really what it comes down to. Porn is free speech. They'll try to take it all the way to the Supreme Court, but the Supreme Court won't even hear it. I guarantee it. We hope. Yep. I mean, yep. fingers crossed. Yeah. I mean, Kavanaugh would probably really like to dig into that evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I felt gross saying it. I'm sorry. I, I was I was thinking of uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Thomas would also love digging Claire, into that. Clarence Thomas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you know? He never says anything. That'd That's be the true. only time he's sitting there smiling. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Republican, <laughs> Republican paranoia. <laughs> Idaho is ending Powerball because of foreigners. <laughs> What? Only, Wait, only what? Idaho would do this. <laughs> no, no, that's the thing. It's not. It's white foreigners. I yeah. thought they liked white people up in there. Not Canadians. What? Yeah. <laughs> How did they come up with this? I just want to know, like, who is spreading these rumors? Is it just someone's like, let's see if we could fuck with them today? They and must so have had a winner out of Vancouver. Yeah. That's all I could think this of. Is, this is no, 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 Australia. Oh, Australia. Oh. Yeah, Idaho lawmakers uh, fearing a foreign participation in the Powerball lottery uh, killed legislation that would have allowed the game uh, to continue to run in the state where it's been running for more than 30 years. Idaho lottery officials sought a change uh, in the state law because Powerball is expanding to include Australia in 2021 and Britain in 2022. And uh, current Idaho law only allows lotteries uh, in the state played by people in the United States and Canada. So yeah. if Powerball expands to Australia and Britain, that's somehow going to affect the Idaho lottery? Well, because it's Powerball, and Powerball is multi-jurisdictional, but I each guess. state has its own commission. So you'd think with all the Utahns running up to Idaho to play Powerball, there just wouldn't the the English and the Australians just wouldn't have a chance to ever win. Right. But (laughs) it it comes down to the way that the Denver. Go ahead. They're just going to have to go to Wyoming. Yeah. Which is where to drive. I don't have to go to fucking Logan. Yeah. I prefer my I prefer my Powerball to be a little faster. I put a quarter in the machine. I pull a lever and it tells me whether I won or not. (laughs) <laughs> and I can get Fair. that by driving to Wendover. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Idaho is so goddamn weird and conservative that even Democrats jumped on board with the, oh my God, foreigners. And it's like, <laughs> guys, it's not fucking Mexico. Why are you all upset? These, <laughs> these are white people. There's just more it's, white people. Just a bunch of white people. You're fine. This is your people. This is what you like. They got funny accents. Yeah. We yeah. don't want fun of kids winning our money. <laughs> so you have that money in, going to Australia. <laughs> in a news section I like to call dipshit news. <laughs> <laughs> um, a father of a toddler has been arrested uh, for bringing his two-year-old into an elephant habitat at the San Diego Zoo on Friday. Police say an elephant became upset after seeing the man and child in its habitat. You think? Yeah. Despite multiple barriers, a purposefully and illegally trespassed into a habitat, which is home to our Asian and African elephants. Those Let elephants me just only want right the there. people who look after them in there. <laughs> it says two guests, despite multiple barriers. Let's just say one guest and the kid that he brought that can't do anything but just follow his dad. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, don't pull the kid in. It's not two guests. It was one guest and a not and a clearly abducted child. Yes. <laughs> <was> his own. <laughs> Miami Beach has over the weekend declared a state of emergency because of spring break crowds that have descended on the popular South Florida destination. 
<gasps> during an afternoon uh, news conference, Mayor Dan Gelber. You do realize we're still in the middle of a pandemic, children. Not in <laughs> Miami. There is the sun. It's warm. <laughs> They're outdoors. Outdoors. <laughs> it's like, it's just, this is just shocking. Shocking. Yep. Yeah. It's another goddamn boondoggle that's going to result in a mass infection. Mm-hmm. That's fucked up. I saw someone you know, talk I mean, bragging about living in Florida and nothing being closed down. It's like, oh, you're just going to brag about that, you dumbass? Like, okay. Oh, this is perfect Kevin breeding ground fucking... for those variants, like the Brazilian variant and the British variant that just are far more infectious. Perfect yeah. breeding yeah. ground is Florida, period. Yeah. Well, Especially Kevin goddamn break. Sorbo popped up on the Twitter this last week uh, saying, hey. I give hugs. I don't socially distance. I don't wear a mask and I haven't gotten sick. So obviously there's no problem to which most of the internet was like, there's more than a half a million dead people. You double dip motherfucker. <laughs> we still know you double dip your chips to Kevin, Cor- Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> How he hasn't gotten sick. He's the carrier. Yeah. He's yeah. probably given it to a lot of people. Yep. yep. He's, he's transmitting and it. You know what? Hugs he gives. If you're a Kevin Sorbo fan, you kind of had it coming. You deserve it. If you're hugging uh, him, you deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I miss hugs, but I'm going to have a hard time. I almost shook a hand the other day. It was weird. Mm-mm. You know, the hand was offered and I reached back for it out of some sort of habit. And right right before the palms were about to connect, we both went, what the fuck? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, no! No! Wait, what, what, and then wait. we bumped, we bumped elbows. There you go. Um, so a dog rescue charity linked to Laura Trump has been funneling money into Donald Trump's pocket. The Big Dog what? Ranch Rescue has spent as much as one point nine million dollars at Trump properties in the last few years, uh, and is spending two hundred twenty-five thousand more at Mar-a-Lago last weekend. I'm just gonna say, you guys. Michael Vick has done more for dogs than Donald Trump and his whole family. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So the dog rescue charity, um, according to a permit filed with the town of Palm Beach, Florida, uh, will spend almost a quarter of a million dollars at Mar-a-Lago, where Donald Trump now lives. The profit from that spending winds up in his pocket. Internal Revenue Service filings show that the group has spent as much as $1,883,160 on fundraising costs at Mar-a-Lago and Trump's golf course. Laura Trump, wife of Eric Trump, has been listed as a chairwoman for charity events in 2018-2019. So what we're saying is, once again, the Trumps are stealing from another charity? Yeah. Yeah. Which, what do we got? We got uh, we got uh, veterans, kids, yep. cancer, and now uh, dog now rescue. Dog, dog rescue. Yeah. Any charity they yeah. can get involved, they can get their hooks in. It's how they make their money now. They're grifters. Flat. They really That's are. Disgusting. Yep. It is. It is. It is truly and and purely disgusting. All right. We got two stories in a minute twenty seconds. Uh, Turkey has withdrawn from the Istanbul Convention uh, that would combat violence against women. So, but they're still all in that. for the Const- Constantinople division or convention. They're still all in for that one. Uh, you, of course you did. Yeah, of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> it's nobody's business but the Turks. That's right. But yeah, uh, it's an international treaty to protect women through presidential decree um, issued in the early hours of Saturday. Turkish President uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Erdogan. But yeah, so fuck that guy. Yeah, he's like, no, I, we want to, we want to have violence against women. Didn't the GOP just kind of say the same thing though? Oh, they've said that for years. Oh, constantly. But at least the Violence Against Women Act still passed. Yeah. You know, so they're then- just like, wait, the Violence Against Women Act isn't about violence against women. It's about being against violence against women. I can't sign that. I'm a Republican. <laughs> and then I forgot to load the sounder. So just pretend you can hear banjos playing in the background in a swampy, humid atmosphere. But 12 GOP Congress critters voted against honoring Capitol Police who protected them during the riot. 
stating that it's because uh, they didn't like the language. So this is Andy Biggs, Michael Cloud, Andrew Clyde, Matt Gates, Bob Good, Lance Gooden, Marjorie Taylor Green, Andy Harris, <clears throat> Thomas Massey, John Rose, Greg Estube, and guess who's right there in the forefront? Ladies and gentlemen, friend of the show, Louis Gomert. Woohoo! Oh boy. You thought, oh. you thought Marjorie Taylor Green had stolen all of his thunder. He's still there right at the front. <laughs> Uh, 11 of the 12 uh, voted to block certification of Joe Biden's victory after the insurrection. Um, but the 12th yeah, was basically, Marjorie Taylor really, Green, whose reason was. <laughs> she was the, the, the resolution read the part that they have a problem with on January 6, 2021, a mob of insurrectionists forced its way into the U.S. Capitol building and congressional office buildings engaged in acts of vandalism, looting, and violently attacked Capitol police officers. The desecration of the U.S. Capitol, which is the temple of our American democracy, and the violence targeting Congress are horrors that will forever stain our nation's history. Well, it turns out these 12 Republicans had a problem with the language, so Louis Gohmert came to the rescue and started circulating a competing resolution that stripped mention of the insurrection, which is the reason it's happening in the first place. It's the only reason the Capitol Police got involved. <laughs> and uh, Gomert's resolution only said that Officer Sicknick, who was murdered by fucking MAGA hats, mm. uh, passed January 2021, even though two members of the mob have now been arrested and charged with his assault. Nobody gave Gomert's resolution a vote. Aww. But Gilbert wrote, Speaker Pelosi's bill, H.R. 1085, does not honor anyone, but rather seeks to drive a narrative that isn't substantiated by known facts, showing that he doesn't know what a known fact is. Exactly. We absolutely do want to show our gratitude and respect the U.S. Capitol Police, so I remove the Speaker's false and politicized narrative in order to arrive at legislation that truly honors those who self-serve us in Congress by removing any mention of why this resolution exists in the first place mm -hmm. you piece of shit so steny hoyer let him have it right in the bits you know told him mm -hmm. to go fuck himself all right uh we are up against a hard commercial break that we are now two minutes late for so if you will stand by it's time for you know money stuff we hope we hope <laughs> Hi, it's Olivia Munn with my shelter pets, Frankie and Chance, reminding you that when you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. Adopt pure love at the shelterpetproject.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council, the Humane Society of the United States, and Maddie's Fund. This week on the world's greatest comic book podcast, first... The obituaries. The bodies have hit the floor. Then, Henry Cavill reacts to the Snyder Cut. Oh, this is quite nice. Ooh, interesting. Mini Driver is launching a podcast. Faith, oh my God, I'm going to do a podcast. It's going to be great. <laughs> DC is still making a Batgirl movie. Are they? But are they really? On TV, we talk Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Nothing happened. And The Boys is getting a spinoff. I'm not allowed to use that word without permission. CW has cast the lead in Naomi. And us! Michelle Gomez is perfectly cast in the next season of Doom Patrol. Missy! Comics, we review Truth and Justice number two, Nightwing, Superman Red and Blue, Noctera, Nonstop Spider-Man, and Berserker! And more. Lots more. All this and face off the sequel. <laughs> face front, true believers. It's the world's greatest comic book podcast. Available Tuesdays on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and the comicbookpodcast.com. Somebody bring me the bees. It's time for more bees. That's how they get his face off this time, is they stick him That's in the right. little, little wicker. Not the bees. Not the bees. <laughs> The future's here and we belong. She can sell, she can do more. Like build a rocket and watch it soar. Or clean the oceans and make the world a better place. Oh, she can sell, so can you. Find a cure, invent something new. There's 
no challenge in the world that she can't face. She can stem. Learn more at She Can Stem. A message brought to you by the Ad Council. For some reason, you are still listening to The Left Show. All right, then. Here's some more of that, I suppose. I'll tell you what. The thing about that uh, that STEM commercial, I, mm-hmm. I dig the message. I think that the yeah. message is important, and I like it. And I think that the audio mix on it is so shitty done that you can barely understand what the girls are saying and, and that it's a dumb song. Well, that's but- because they're focusing on STEM and not STEAM. <laughs> steam is steam is adding arts into science technology engineering and math if you don't add yeah. arts you get that kind of thing <laughs> where people don't pay attention to what the audience is going to hear <laughs> i like steam if my kids had gone to the beehive steam academy i think they would have been a lot happier mm-hmm. than having gone to the stem academy uh because my kids have followed in my footsteps and have decided that liberal arts are the arts for them not the numerical arts. No, not the not the mathematical arts. Nope. I got to tell you, the 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 delay on one of those channels was was it made me feel like the luckiest, luckiest, luckiest man, man, man in the world, world, world. As I was listening to those. Two. <laughs> Thank goodness it doesn't actually I hit know, the. It edit. doesn't actually hit the edit that way. But I was like, wow, that was that's fun to listen to. <laughs> it Moving really on. Is. So we're at a year, a little more than a year at this point, since uh, the police kicked in the wrong door and killed Breonna Taylor. Uh, And so when you look at something like that, something that big and severe, where my mind goes is uh, you you make some changes to the way things happen. Uh, You do a little more surveillance. You figure out whether or not it's real this tip that you've got that has you kicking in a door uh, guns ready to go um you know you make some structural changes to policy that's where my mind goes Mm -hmm. kentucky on the other hand Mm -hmm. has decided to criminalize the insulting of police officers yeah kentucky what do you do kentucky where the brianna taylor incident happened yeah I mean, it's just nuts. So uh, I have a sounder for that. Give me just a sec. I'll really cue it up. If the so they they, uh, they, they kind of did a little bit of this Kimberly, on the black. The, there's a story coming out of, out of Kentucky that sort of boggles my mind. Uh, Senate votes to criminalize insults to police, coincidentally around the one-year anniversary of Breonna Taylor's death. Headline, Kentucky Senate votes to criminalize insulting a police in a in, in way that could cause quote, violent response. I, Kimberly, I mean, <laughs> yeah, doesn't this, I mean, isn't this I a First Amendment challenge? It is. There are so many, there are constitutional problems with this, but I think at its core, uh, the biggest concern and, and what uh, sort of gives me a, a shot in my gut, and it should give Americans a shot in their gut too, is that it seems to be seeking to criminalize the behavior of a, a, a victim of police brutality, it, it seems mm. to to shift the blame that if somebody is a victim of police brutality, not only did they ask for it, but that the way they asked for it, it, it can, in addition, be criminalized. I mean, I think that that is really appalling. Um, I think the timing of this is horrific and that it does come near the one year anniversary of uh, Breonna Taylor's death, something that there has still not been any accountability at all for. And we need that accountability. Listen, going Going through listening to this trial of Derek Chauvin, uh, recounting the, the anniversary of Breonna Taylor, these are reminders of the trauma that black folks have suffered, but the trauma is compounded by the lack of justice. So I, I mean, that's really what it comes down to is white lawmakers have decided that if you say something mean to a cop and the cop hits you, it's your fault. What if they say something mean to me? I hit them. I go to jail. Yeah. You go to jail. Yeah, that's what it is. No, this is this comes down. We were just talking about this at the top of the show with the White House staffers and everything. 
Uh, it's like, yeah, he could pardon them, but the optics of it, well, here's optics in reverse because these guys are, it's so clear that they're, they're basically saying, no, we don't care about any of this stuff that you have protested against for a fucking year. Yeah. So I got more racist stuff. <laughs> so oh, much good. Racist stuff. <laughs> um, what's what? Uh, yeah, you're fine. It's all right. <laughs> I'm living in an apartment now. I got neighbors that never shut the fuck up. We background noise is something that happened. We're mm-hmm. just going to deal with it. But there was a very disturbing trend. And I'm not really going to go off on this because for once, it's something that I'm seeing on the news all the goddamn time, which is awesome. But there's been a very disturbing trend of anti-Asian violence all across the United States over the last couple of years since since. I mean, one, Trump got into office mm-hmm. and, and couldn't shut the fuck up about China. And China. then uh, yeah. and then the, the pandemic hit with COVID-19. And, you know, that fucker's out there calling it uh, Kung Flu and, and blaming China anyway. Called it and the so China we've seen virus. people. Just, he called it the China yeah. virus, even in his little statement from a week ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucker. Yeah. So. I mean, all of this boils. It boils and it bubbles. And we see this in church shootings. We see this in in, in sidewalk violence. We see this all over the place. Mm-hmm. But um, this last week, there was a shooting at three different locations where a white guy with uh, an inbred chin uh, just decided he was going to kill some folks. He killed eight people. Six of them were uh, of Asian descent. Um and that's bad enough. Mm-hmm. That's bad enough. And then this captain on the police force um, in Georgia said that the man who killed the six Asian women and two others in shootings at spas in Atlanta had had a bad day. That was his excuse. He had a bad day. So just go murder people. Yeah, I and then if that's not like bad enough, yeah, yeah, exactly. If that's not bad enough, because we are who we are. If you go back a few months, it turns out that Captain Jay Baker uh, had jumped on uh, a, a sales pitch for a shirt that said "COVID nineteen imported virus from China," and said, "I love my shirt. Get yours while they last." Shocking. I just it, if if they you know if these people had to go to school as long as we had to go or at least like as long as two years then we could weed out the idiots <laughs> so maybe it should be longer than a few months. Uh, I blame No Child Left Behind for most of this shit. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think being a cop should be a four year degree. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And and it should pay more than it does if it is a four year degree. But I think that you have to that you you shouldn't be able to just go to a two week school and and have them think that that you know all the law. I think it should be you know? flat out like joining the military. Being a cop should be like joining the military, just at a local level. You you go away for six weeks to go through a basic training program. When your six weeks are up, you go into a sort of an apprenticeship program where you're learning the ropes. And learning your what your actual fucking job is going to be, and then you're finally deployed into whatever position you're going to have, and yeah. the the entire time you are free of distraction, you are free of everything. You have committed mm-hmm. your life to being a peace officer. Enjoy, you know. And then once you're done, unlike the unlike the army where you're deployed anywhere they fucking want want you to, you're deployed in your in your town where you and your family can now live. But I think you should go through that level of training, the level of training police officers go through and the attitude that police officers cop, pun intended, about the situations in their community is uh, is is wrong and it needs to be addressed, it needs to be fixed. Did you guys get your stimmies yet? Yeah. yeah. I did. It's gone already. Oh, yeah. yeah. Didn't, mistake. Didn't Came take away. Well. It's a coming actually, to go. I was hoping because I was doing that funder that Kickstarter. I was hoping I would get stimmies a week earlier than we did because my Kickstarter was ending. Well, it ended 
the Saturday before we actually got our stimmies. Yeah. And I was like, I'm kind of counting on these stimmies to get me some of these higher tiered ones done. You know, somebody might be willing to throw a little money at me because I got their stimmy, but I didn't know stimmies came through. So that passed. Money for kids passed. Yes. Uh, money for vaccine distribution passed. Money for <laughs> cities, uh, counties, and states to to get those vaccines distributed passed. Yep. All of these all of these great things passed with only Democrats voting for them. Yep. Yes. No Republicans voted for any of this. And yet Republicans have been taking credit for COVID relief that they voted against. I just love it. Yep. It's so yeah. cold. It's just, I mean, it's just fucking ridiculous. And the, and the worst part is, is so many of their fucking voters will just believe them. Yep. Like, that is so great. Thank you so much for working with them. Yeah. You're, you guys are with the devil. Lindsey Graham, you're such a uh, you're such a hero to us here. We just are so grateful to you for getting us this money. <laughs> so, a couple of a couple of of sinners, as it were, one of which most egregious, um, Representative Maria Elviro Salazar uh, <laughs> from Florida. Well, she patted herself on the back for the the Small Business Administration. Um, parts to extend deferment periods for COVID-19 uh, for the economic injury disaster loans. I got one of those and I'm glad for the delay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she she put out on her little Twitter, she's breaking. So proud to announce the Biden administration has just implemented my bipartisan COVID relief bill as part of SBA.gov. She lied. I am so proud that my bipartisan legislation has officially become SBA policy. She continued to lie. Oh, I just, it's just, it's just Roger Wicker, Senator, Republican Senator, independent restaurant operators have now won $28.6 billion worth of targeted relief. The funding will ensure that small businesses can survive the pandemic by helping to adapt their operations and keep their employees on the payroll. Well, he voted against it. Yep. He and Kirsten fucking Cinema both proposed an amendment to the bill with the funding that passed with bipartisan support, but Wicker voted against the fucking bill. I mean, I mean Republicans are dumb, but man, they're dumb. But they and I don't want to say that. I don't. I don't want to be the guy that points at a whole group of people and throws a blanket statement out like, "Oh my God, you people are so fucking dumb." They're proving it. But clearly, they are because they're gonna they're gonna continue to support these 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 uh, these shameless liars all the way through the next uh, election cycle and beyond. They're not gonna fact check it because fact no. checkers are typically wrong. mm Hmm. Right. Yeah, <laughs> so wrong. I don't know. All right, I got a couple of sounders for this next bit. Um, making sure that they're all properly loaded. Pause that one. Street Journal says, and get this. Oh, shut up, Kilmeady. We're not on you yet, you piece of shit. <laughs> uh, the first one, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson. Look, for a guy that is constantly off his fucking nut. <laughs> really, really just went weird this last week with his whole attack upon women in the military. I'm like, okay, dummy. And to the point where Fox News now says that uh, Susan Duckworth was injured while serving in Iraq as opposed to got both of her fucking legs blown off while, you know, helicoptering people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, Vote Vets put together a commercial. And it sounds a little like this. Trader Carlson's got a thing about patriotic women. So we've got new hairstyles and maternity flight suits. Pregnant women are going to fight our wars. Our military needs to become, as Joe Biden says, more feminine. Whatever feminine means anymore. Appreciate the shout out during Women's History Month. But it's not the first time he's attacked women who serve. What a coward. Tammy Duckworth is also a fraud. 
it's out of control. And the Pentagon's going along with this. Again, this is a mockery of the U.S. military. No, sir. This is the U.S. military. The men and women who defend your freedom. Something a prep school boy like you <laughs> will never understand. <laughs> the best part of that commercial is at the end where they... They do his little backstage bit from his dancing on the star shtick where he's doing his little dance yep. in his big fluffy shirt. But uh, I don't know. Tom Carson's not going to fight for anybody, so might as well the have air, The heir to the Swanson frozen dinner uh, uh, family, basically. Really? Tucker Carlson, yeah. Fuck that guy. No more Swanson dinners here. He was a he was a frozen uh, maybe not Swanson. I know if you watch um if you watch John Oliver's show from last week, and you can find it on YouTube, by the way. It's they he posts them up there. Uh he he basically goes into Tucker Carlson and why he's not somebody anyone should ever fucking listen to or believe is a man of the people. And yeah, he's basically the heir to some frozen dinner uh franchise, yeah. uh, you know, family. Yeah. Like everybody in Fox News, they're from very wealthy families yep. that mm -hmm. haven't worked in generations. Yep, exactly. So and over on Fox News work. this week, oh boy. You know, Brian Kilmeade decided that President Trump wasn't getting enough lovings <laughs> and went absolutely apeshit. I got three clips on this one. Here's the first one. To be that unifier, the uniter that he talked about in his inaugural. He could talk about Operation Warp Speed, how it exceeded expectations. He could talk about how the third vaccine was almost ready to go when he took office and two was already wowing the world, including got it okayed in, uh, uh, in England first. And wh where does it, since when is it a great idea to make more vaccine? It turns out, according to the New York Times, Donald Trump was set in, by July to have eight hundred million vaccines just for the two that was approved so that was already done number three can we by the way just to insert here no no it was not stop no, praising not. anthony fauci and saying he's world renowned everyone might know him but i don't know how many people should be listening to him he's the one who had us hosing down our groceries he's the one who said flat out in january this is not going to be a big problem here he's the one who told us multiple times not to wear a mask they only make you feel better and give you this right. sens sensation that you're going to uh you're going to be prevented from getting this illness now is that not what that, trump um, said <laughs> no fauci did say that yeah, I felt and then, good. as we do in science, as we do in medicine, mm. as we do in healthcare, more facts made us change our mind on what was good and what was bad. Well, and, you and know? The, the idea of you wear a mask in public not to prevent getting the disease, you selfish idiots that are the American public, but you prevent giving the disease to someone by wearing the mask. Yeah. That was the whole Which reason. Is that's the hardest part for people to comprehend though is yeah. well i'm not sick like they're i'm not going to give it to them they're going to give it to me i can't wear a mask it doesn't matter i can't breathe through this mask okay so kill me gets worse oh no oh yeah 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 this one listen for him talking about uh talking to donald trump directly about healthcare experts and if Donald Trump is watching, uh, he's going to say, I told you so. Trump's biggest mistake was putting too much faith in health experts and their lockdown models as hospitals in northern Italy burst with patients. Epidemiologists predicted U.S. hospitals do the same. They were wrong. So we said 15 days to lock down. The governors never let up. Why not point out the fact that governors over uh, over lockdown Americans and we still can't get the shackles off in about 25 states? And Oh, because they didn't. I don't feel like we were locked down even kind of. I feel like the nope. stores had to do it for everybody. Like corporations had to take down to yeah. make everybody actually do things. Uh, Herbert did nothing. Cox Herbert No, did. nothing at all. He didn't do anything until they finally decided to pass a mask mandate. And then we wound up with people doing dipshit protests about having to wear a mask now. And I'm like. You've had, to wear a ma you've had to wear a mask every time you've walked into a store for the last three nine months. Why? Why the fuck are you complaining now? Yeah, I told you guys. I told you the antique cowboy story from the other day, didn't I? Uh, no. Not on, not on, not on left show, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work, 
and there's this guy that comes in about once a month and goes through the shelves of free things that we have, you know, like slug, like city weekly, like comic book news, hmm. like previews, all that. He comes in, he takes free shit. He leaves. It's like, ah, whatever, you're fucking harmless. But he comes in wearing his mask and his fucking cowboy hat. And it was a nice cowboy hat. I've, I keep wanting to compliment him on it, but he keeps being a complete fucking lunatic every time he comes in. But this particular time, he just walks in. I come out of the back. I'm wearing my mask. And he's like, and, he, and so is he. But he's like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be one of those goddamn places that makes me keep wearing a fucking mask after the mask mandate goes away? And I said, yeah, it is. Yeah, we'll probably be wearing them well into September. It's like, fucking Jesus, I can't believe this, that, and the other. And goddamn, my First Amendment, Second Amendment, Third Amendment, Fifth Amendment. I don't, it's this shit. Fucking shit. Hey, do you mind if I take this little thing right here? Is that okay? Can I have one of these right there? I'm like, yeah, you can have one of these. Like, fucking mess. I can't take it off. Uh, it's to the door. Doesn't open it yet. Turns around and looks me right in the eye, tears his mask off, and then leaves. And I'm like, well okay dummy whatever whatever you know you do, my door without a fucking mask i'm thinking of getting like a squirt gun <laughs> so like you do with you're trying to train dipshit cats yeah you know, somebody walks in without a mask right now what i do because somebody walked in the other day without a mask on and uh, this lady and i and i kind of looked at her and she looked at me and was wondering why my eyes were so big i suppose and i said i can see your whole face and she went, huh? And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be able to see your whole face. And she's like, oh, my God, I'll get my mask. And so she leaves and she goes and gets her mask. <laughs> <laughs> Over this weekend, some dude came in, very handsome gentleman, you know, and he walks in and he look, kind of looks over at me and I'm looking at him and I don't know what my eyes say, but they tend to stop people in their tracks. Mm -hmm. He's like, what? I'm like, I can see your whole face and I should not be able to see your whole face. And he's like, Oh, yeah. Okay. Shit. Then he goes out to his car and he puts on his mask. And unlike a lot of people that get a little upset and don't want to talk to you after that, he was totally cool. Bought a whole bunch of shit. Great guy. And his daughter was fantastic. She kept busting his balls about forgetting his mask. But <laughs> okay, well, on Kill Meaty, and I'm going to finish off on this one because it's pretty quick, but I want you to pay very close attention to what he thinks of how many Americans have died so far uh, due to the pandemic. That's the story that should have been written. And we don't need to go over the 500,000 dead. We had that moment. Let's talk about the future moving forward. Every time he has a chance to praise the previous administration, he not only doesn't praise, uh, he kicks them in the groin. That's the story that should have been written. And we don't need to go over the 500,000 dead. We had that moment. We had that moment. That moment. <laughs> that moment when 500,000 people died. We shouldn't have to talk about that ever we don't, again. Benghazi. We don't, we don't need to give Trump credit for the 500,000 dead. We just need to give him credit for the fact that some people in his administration did their fucking job. Did their job while, uh, he, did, while he did nothing and complained the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and when given And when given the chance to buy Pfizer vaccine, enough Pfizer vaccine, while they were in the, in, in the process of making it, he said, nah, we're good. We're fine. Yeah. So uh, we're coming up on the hour, so we can't really get into too many more things. So a couple of these are going to carry over into our Patreon section. Uh, but there's two things I just I wanted to basically confirm mm -hmm. and and to one of them, at least to applaud. And that's that Deb Haaland uh, was confirmed as the interior secretary. She's the first Native American to ever hold that position. I really looking forward to her tenure uh, at the head of that department. I hope, I hope it is beyond a shadow of a doubt, a national parks making machine. I hope that they just go fucking nuts. I hope that they give land back to first peoples. I hope that they that they get fucking water and electricity onto the goddamn reses that we white people have stuck these poor fuckers on. You know, I hope that, that, that this is a catalyst for massive amounts of expensive fucking change. And if it's not, I'm going to be mad at Joe Biden. And you guys know how hard it is for me to be mad at Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. 
And then the thing I want to close on as we come up to the one hour mark is uh, biological fathers now need to share the cost of pregnancy in Utah. This is a weird story and I don't really have a handle on it. And so I wanted to, I really wanted to give it a long time, but biological fathers need to share the cost of pregnancy, but under the new law, fathers won't have to pay for abortions. They didn't consent to. Of course. Yeah. I'm like one hand giveth one hand punches itself in the nuts. It's just, yes. <laughs> you know, but yeah, biological fathers will have to pay for half of the out of pocket costs of president's of pregnancy and childbirth under a new bill signed into law on Tuesday. I am going to take this article of discussion and start off uh, our, our, our Patreon portion with it. But in the meantime, clearing up a little business and tidying up as we close the show down, um, I'm really, really starting to think that I'm going to start an OnlyFans. I, I, I have been giving it due consideration uh, and, and I'm trying to raise money for the shows and Patreon only works a little bit. And so will I be clothed the whole time? Yes, I will. Absolutely. <laughs> I will. I'm doing it only fans. I will play some guitar and sing some songs and read some poems and, and, uh, maybe read some, some prose. Uh, maybe we'll do a little Shakespeare, do some sonnets, I guess that worked out well for Patrick Stewart. Um, go. no nudity. I'm trying to make money unless you want to pay me to keep my clothes on by all means. <laughs> there we are. Yep. But, uh, if you have a problem with me doing this, now's the time to speak because sometime in the next two weeks, I'm probably going to pull the trigger. It's ridiculous. I know. Is it a stunt? Absolutely. It is. I have got to pay for these shows. Um, uh, and this is how I do it. Uh, I guess because, uh, now, to keep me from prostituting myself in such a way, you guys can pop over to patreon.com slash defend media uh, and join us there for just very, very low cost options. It's basically a pay what you can the way I have it structured, which is wrong. And maybe that's why it's not working as well. But I want everybody to have access to all of the good chunks of post news that we do, not only from the left show, but from uh, the world's greatest comic book podcast each and every week that we record the show. So quality material. Sometimes results may vary, but a quality material. And yeah. <laughs> if you're looking for the vulgarity of shows of old, it's behind the paywall that you find them. Mm -hmm. All right, Taylor. What? Hi. Oh my God. Has it been nice to have you on? Come say hi. Hi buddy. Oh. Hello. Yep. We went shopping together once. We should be best friends. We did, huh? Not a word. Kid. Not a word. She's <laughs> audio. Oh, you want to go? <laughs> bye bye. If uh, if you guys aren't uh, watching this on YouTube, you can pop over and see one of the cutest kids of all time. Yes. Yeah. Almost fully potty trained, guys. Yes. Woo! Just got to break that pooping under the table part. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, Say good night, ladies. To play. Guys, good night, go. ladies. Good night. Good night. Say good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> if you've made it this far, you might as well join us on Patreon. Patreon.com Defen Media. <laughs> This episode and more always available at www.theleftshow.com.